This is Hinkley Point C, Europe's biggest construction site, possibly even the largest. Nuclear power plant project started in 2016, keeps being delayed and over budget as well. UK's return to building nuclear power plants after decades, promising to shape the future of energy in the country. However, along the way, it has faced big delays, environmental fights and rising costs, making it the most expensive project of its kind. And now, its story reveals the high stakes of Britain's $57 billion nuclear gamble. EDF's new nuclear plant in southwest England is likely to soar in price to $40 billion. But the question is, is this $57 billion gamble worth it in the end? Let's see. In the mid-1950s, after the devastating impact of Hiroshima, three nations began a race to use nuclear power for peaceful purposes. The Soviet Union took the lead, producing electricity with atomic energy in 1954. Just a few years later, in 1957, the U.S. launched the first full-scale nuclear power plant dedicated entirely to peaceful uses. Yet between these milestones, the UK made its own groundbreaking achievement. At Calder Hall in Northern England, atomic energy was used commercially for the first time in history. This scale of power generation from the atom was unmatched by Russia or the United States at the time. While Calder Hall's primary goal was to produce plutonium for nuclear weapons, it also marked the UK as a trailblazer in nuclear energy. That pioneering spirit carried on, making nuclear power a key energy source for Britain well into the 21st century. Given this history, you might expect building a new power plant to be a smooth mission for the UK. Unfortunately, the answer is no. The project has taken far longer than planned and costs have spiraled out of control. The process has grown incredibly complicated, with challenges piling up at every stage. Right now, the UK operates nine nuclear reactors across five sites, generating about 13% of the country's electricity. Many of the UK's current nuclear reactors are nearing the end of their lifespans. Built using older technologies, these reactors are either scheduled for decommissioning or have already started shutting down. In fact, six reactors have been closed in just the last few years, and no new power plants have been built here since the 1980s. But this doesn't mean the UK is walking away from nuclear energy. Quite the opposite. The UK has big plans to rebuild its nuclear capacity, aiming to construct as many as eight new reactors by 2050. While 2050 might seem far away, Hinkley Point C is already leading the way, accounting for a quarter of those planned reactors. The scale of this project is massive. Located on the south bank of the Bristol Channel in Somerset, England, Hinkley Point C is widely recognized as Europe's largest construction site. Spanning 430 acres, it towers over the older Hinkley Point A and B plants, which were built in the 50s and 60s and are now closed. Once complete, Hinkley Point C will produce 7% of the UK's electricity, enough to power 6 million homes for 60 years. So, how does this all come together? And what are the key parts of a modern nuclear power plant? To start, we need to understand where all that energy comes from. At the heart of it all are the reactors. These are the core of the system, where uranium atoms are split in a process called fission. This splitting generates heat, which turns water into steam. That steam, in turn, powers a turbine to generate electricity. But building the UK's first new nuclear plant in over 30 years is already a huge task. And on top of that, it's the first time the country is using EPR reactors. EPR stands for European Pressurized Water Reactor, a newer technology that's already been used in places like Flamanville in France and Olkiluoto in Finland. Built by EDF, the French energy company now managing Hinkley Point C, these reactors are designed to be more efficient and safer. They use 17% less uranium than older designs, 
and have four safety systems to guard against risks like floods or earthquakes. While such events are rare in the UK, it's always better to stay prepared, especially when dealing with something as powerful as nuclear energy. Now, let's figure out where the reactors at Hinkley Point C are located. You'll find them inside the reactor buildings, and they're impossible to miss because of their enormous size. Just like almost every structure on this site, building them required an incredible amount of machine power. Since so much of the construction involves moving massive pieces at the same time, the site is filled with cranes, over 50 in total. But one crane stands above the rest, quite literally. Meet Big Carl, the world's largest land-based crane. Big Carl has taken on several heavy lifting jobs, including placing the dome on the first reactor building and lifting the enormous liner rings, each weighing hundreds of tons. These liner rings are key parts of the inner containment wall, and there are three for each reactor. Once lifted into position, they're encased in two thick layers of concrete. Speaking of concrete, Hinkley Point C has used staggering amounts of it, 25% more than the plants it was modeled after. In fact, for the base of the first reactor alone, 9,000 cubic meters of concrete were poured in a single go setting a new record previously held by London's Shard. British regulations required several changes to the design compared to the plants in France and Finland. And by several, we mean 7,000 alterations to make everything compliant. These adjustments weren't small either. 35% more steel was added, along with all that extra concrete. However, following these strict rules took much longer than expected leading to significant delays in the project timeline. One of the most important milestones was the installation of the reactor's main component, the pressure vessel. Delivered in 2023 and installed in late 2024, this giant steel container is designed to hold the nuclear fuel. To position it, workers first lifted it onto rails and guided it carefully through an equipment hatch. Once inside the reactor building, the vessel was gently rotated and lowered into place with precision. Surrounding each of these vessels will be four massive steam generators, each 25 meters long and weighing over 500 tons. These generators play a key role in converting heat into energy. After six years of design, manufacturing, and testing, the first steam generator finally arrived on site in May 2024. Its journey from northern France involved both sea and road travel. Right next to the reactor buildings, you'll find the enormous turbine halls, which stand 50 meters tall and will house the largest turbines of their kind in the world. Although the site is buzzing with activity, it's far from looking like a finished power plant. You might think it's nearly complete, but in reality, it likely won't be operational until at least 2029. And that's just for one reactor. Full power isn't expected until 2031. This long timeline is a far cry from the original plan, which aimed for the entire project to be finished by 2025, when contracts were first signed in 2016. As with many large-scale projects, costs have also skyrocketed. Initially budgeted at $18 billion, the total cost is now expected to climb as high as $46 billion after inflation, adding an extra $10 billion to the price tag. That's over $57 billion in US dollars, much more than what was spent on the new reactors at Plant Vogel in the US, which faced its own set of challenges. The costs at Hinkley Point have risen so much that it's now set to become the most expensive nuclear power plant ever built, and by a large margin. EDF has pointed to several reasons for this. First, the project has faced significant labor and material shortages. Then, the COVID pandemic caused more than a year of delays. On top of that, there have been numerous regulatory changes that further complicated the process. Training a skilled workforce and establishing supply chains in a country that hasn't built a nuclear plant in a generation has taken much longer than expected. But that's not the only challenge. 
Another major concern has been the environmental impact. And it's not just about nuclear waste. The broader effects of this massive construction effort are still unfolding. And they continue to raise questions about the plant's long-term sustainability. Naturally, the environmental concerns around the plant have sparked strong opposition, especially when it comes to nuclear waste. The plan is to store the waste hundreds of meters underground in a special facility designed to keep it safe for the long term. However, the real controversy isn't just about waste, it's about fish. Nuclear plants need large amounts of water to cool their reactors, and Hinkley Point C is no exception. To supply enough water, eight kilometers of tunnels have been built, connecting the site to the Bristol Channel. These tunnels will allow up to 120,000 liters of water to flow every second. But the Bristol Channel is teeming with fish, and there's a risk that many could be sucked into the system by accident. In response, EDF has proposed a fish recovery and return system to safely release any fish that get caught. But there's more. The Marine Management Organization has required EDF to install an acoustic deterrent to keep the fish away from the water intakes. This system would send underwater sound waves to scare the fish off. However, EDF isn't fully on board, calling the idea dangerous to install and unproven. That's why EDF has suggested a different approach, creating new salt marshes in the surrounding area. They believe these marshes will offer breeding grounds, food, and shelter for wildlife, helping to offset the impact of removing tons of fish from the water every month. However, this idea has also faced criticism. To build these new habitats, hundreds of acres of land would need to be flooded, which has upset local farmers and the local council. Despite these challenges, when it comes to a project as massive as Hinkley Point C, it all depends on how you look at it. While the project brings many challenges for the locals, there are also plenty of benefits. The construction of Hinkley Point C is expected to create around 25,000 job opportunities, including 1,000 apprenticeships, and contribute 1.5 billion pallers to the local economy. At its peak, about one-third of the labor force will come from the local area, though this will change as the construction progresses depending on the specific skills needed for each phase of the project. In addition, EDF Energy aims to assign up to 64% of the construction contracts to UK-based companies. To help local people take advantage of these opportunities, the Council and its partners are working hard to provide the necessary training. Several modern training facilities are already up and running. On top of that, Sedgemore is also home to various commercial developments that are either operational or in progress, which will further help the local supply chain benefit from the nuclear development. Sure, things haven't gone perfectly so far, but it's important to remember that constructing something this complex, especially after such a long break from nuclear projects, was never going to be easy. Looking ahead, though, there is some reason for hope. EDF believes the hardest part is behind them and that they've learned valuable lessons from the challenges faced while building the first reactor. In fact, teams are now applying those lessons to make the construction of the second reactor 20 to 30 percent more efficient. This could mean fewer delays and a smoother process as the project moves forward. One example of the progress being made is that they can now weld the massive steel pools four times faster than before. These pools are crucial, as they will house the reactor and protect against radiation. But getting this right is not just important for Hinkley Point C. It's also vital for what comes after. EDF is already planning for its next UK plant, Sizewell C in Suffolk. This will be nearly identical to Hinkley Point C, and the company is eager to avoid the mistakes made during this project. The UK is aiming to quadruple its nuclear capacity by mid-century, so it can't afford another project full of complications. But the big question remains, will Hinkley Point and Sizewell really be worth the money spent? Hinkley Point and Sizewell together are expected to produce about 14% of the UK's electricity. This matches the amount nuclear contributed in 2022, 
but is much less than the 24.5% nuclear supplied during its peak in the 1990s. However, when both plants start generating power, the only other operational nuclear station will be size well B, which means nuclear's total contribution will increase slightly to 17%. The main argument against nuclear is its high cost. Critics say it doesn't offer good value compared to renewable energy. European pressurized reactor have faced serious delays and cost overruns. For instance, the Olkiluoto plant in Finland was supposed to start operating in 2010, but it took 18 years to finish and finally began last year. Its cost ballooned from an initial 3 bn to 11 mon bn. Similarly, France's Flamanville plant has taken 16 years to build, costing 13.2 bn, far exceeding its original budget of 3 BRs. Hinkley Point C was approved in 2016 with a planned cost of 18 bn and a completion date of 2027. But recent estimates put its cost as high as 34 bn in 2050 prices, or 46 bn when adjusted for today's money. With such a history of budget overruns, it's no surprise many people are questioning whether new nuclear projects are really worth it. Hinkley Point started as a private partnership between EDF and China, General Nuclear CGN, with EDF owning two-thirds and CGN holding the remaining third. The project was set to be financed through the Contracts for Difference CFD system, which supports electricity generation methods that can't compete with cheaper gas. Under this system, the government guarantees a minimum payment for the electricity, known as the strike price. In 2012, the strike price for Hinkley Point C was set at $93,050 per megawatt hour, even though electricity at the time cost only 40 pounds per megawatt hour. This led to criticism that nuclear power was too expensive. Since the strike price is linked to inflation, by 2023, it had risen to around $139 per megawatt hour. Meanwhile, renewable energy options became even more affordable. By December 2023, the strike price for offshore wind had been revised to $73 per megawatt hour and solar PV to $61. With the current electricity price at about $83 per megawatt hour, nuclear still remains one of the more expensive zero-carbon options. As costs for Hinkley Point C continued to rise, more funding was needed. Tensions between Britain and China led to CGN pulling back its financial support, leaving EDF to cover the shortfall. EDF asked the UK government for help with the growing costs, but the government declined. By 2023, EDF had been fully nationalized, leaving French taxpayers to shoulder the burden of the project's cost overruns. Similar to Hinkley Point, Sizewell started as a joint venture between EDF and China General Nuclear CGN. However, due to concerns about Chinese involvement, the UK government stepped in and replaced CGN in 2022. With the cost overruns at Hinkley, EDF wanted a new funding approach for Sizewell to avoid taking on the construction risks. The new plan involves using the regulated asset base, RIBOB model, which was also used for the Thames Tideway project. Under this model, a surcharge is added to electricity bills to fund the plant. EDF's role will be to handle the building and operation of the facility, but without shouldering the risks tied to construction. Progress on Sizewell C has been steady, with a development consent order granted in January 2024 and a nuclear site license approved in May 2024. The final decision on the investment is yet to come. Although Sizewell C might cost less to build due to lessons learned from Hinkley Point, the RAB model could lead to higher costs for British consumers, as the funding burden will shift directly to them through electricity surcharges. It's one of the most significant energy decisions the country has made in decades. Still, only time will tell whether this will be viewed as a wise decision or a costly mistake. So, what do you think? Do you believe Hinkley Point C and Sizewell C are worth the cost? Or is there a better way forward for the nation's energy future? Share your thoughts in the comments below.
See you in our next video. Until then, take care and thanks for watching.